Come on. I want to shock people. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome to my office. Yeah. Yeah. We're really living out the LA dream over here. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hot Mess with Alex Earl. This week we are getting out of our comfort zone a little bit and we are in LA. I'm becoming an actress. I decided to ditch social media and I'm becoming an actress. I'm kidding, but kind of not really. You know, we have some exciting things coming up this week. I, I have to read like five lines for each of these things each day, but this is new for me. Well, actually I used to do theater when I was little, but I mean, I was always cast as like a tree in the background because I, it's because I couldn't sing, not because of my acting skills, okay? I just couldn't sing. But we have a lot of fun stuff planned for this week. And, you know, I feel like every time I come to LA, I'm here quick, like two days, weekend, in and out for work. And we're here for a whole like 10 days right now. And I really want to get out of my comfort zone. We're trying some new things. I have a lot of shoots planned, a lot of fun stuff coming up. I have a lot of meetings. So we're going to have a fun week. We're also going to go out a little bit at the end, of course. And I'm probably going to be drained and tired by the end of this. But I think it's important to, I don't know, try something different because I'm so used to Miami. Like I know Miami, like the back of my hand, I've been there for five years. I feel like coming to LA land for a little bit is just gonna be different for me and it's exciting. Like I'm a person who just loves change. This week, we're really gonna talk a lot about what my plans are with work and what work looks like for me because obviously I feel like I have the most insane job in the world. Like I can't believe that this is what I'm doing after graduating college. So I don't take it for granted at all. And I'm really excited to just keep stepping out of my comfort zone and bringing you guys along with me. Step one of getting out of my comfort zone. We have to get out of bed, Alex. We cannot sit here all day. We're off. I'm, I wanna see Rodeo Drive. We're gonna take you guys on a little drive down, see the long palm trees. And I don't know how long I can take this microphone before it stops, but we're going to be a little LA tourist and drive around. So let's go for a little car ride. Here we go. Hold on, everybody. We are about to turn on to Rodeo Drive, which is the big fancy street here that has all of the designer shopping. I mean, if you're looking to lose money fast, this, this is, is the place. place to, this <laughs> is the place to be. Very fancy over here. So we're nearing the end, um, and I think we want to get coffee. We're <laughs> We're coming to Rodeo Drive to spend $5 on a coffee. Actually, the coffee here is probably like $30 a pop. I am being a full tourist right now and I don't care. <laughs> Yay! Beverly Hills. Okay, running away, running away. Embarrassed. <laughs> All right, guys. It's Big Al's time to bustle up and drive. Get in, losers. We're going shopping. <laughs> Get in, losers. We're going shopping. Oh, <laughs> Braxton's getting us some coffee right now, so I'm going to take the Bronco for a little spin on my own. Woo! Let me crank down the window for y'all. Okay, this is where I get really excited. These big, tall palm trees. Beverly Hills. Oh, I see Braxton. Look at him, he's lost. Look at him, look at him, he lost with the coffees. Look at him, he's so lost without me. He doesn't know what to do. I'm coming to the rescue. Get in, loser, we're going shopping. All the times that I've listened to that song growing up, sitting by the pool, just being like, wow, I want to be there. Like, I think that just cured it inside of me. You like, just that was it. really exciting. You just lived your moment. Wow. Oh my God, Harry Park. Winston. They have really pretty rings. Gorgeous. Why are you telling me that? I'm just saying. Oh, okay. I heard they have really good rings. <laughs> just, 
Because you're wondering where good rings are, it's there. I heard it's there. <laughs> ah, so damn okay. slow. Ooh. Switch. Have a good one. Oh my god, we got our drive through. You see that? Oh, girls. <laughs> Come on down. Now that we're back from our little car ride rendezvous around LA, we're sitting back down and I just want to touch on how important I think it is to change the scene that you're in and to change locations because everywhere has such a different vibe like growing up in new jersey and getting to experience new york city and manhattan was so cool but you know new jersey from new york was extremely different and then new jersey to miami was a huge culture shock for me especially being so young because at you know when you're going into college you're 18 years old at the time i felt like i was really old and now i'm looking back and i was like oh my god i was literally a baby but you were exposed to or i was exposed to a lot being in miami at that age i feel like now that i've been in miami for a while i've really gotten to know it and it's been really great but career-wise obviously i'm an influencer content creator whatever you want to call it and now also a podcast host but miami isn't really a great hub i would say for this industry it's very much so new york or la so a lot of the times for work i'm having to travel and that was part of the reason i wanted to stay in miami after college is because i tend to like not love some people that i meet sometimes that do this no hate or shame to anyone but sometimes people get very wrapped up i feel in your social status and that becomes like very very important to them and that's something that just like doesn't matter to me like i would rather just genuinely like someone and vibe with someone and i have all my friends in miami from college and they've known me for so long so i don't know i just i do like being out of it because i feel like there is a way where you can kind of become like out of touch and you know get lost like that's what i feel like a lot of people say they're like they move to la and then they like lose sense of reality because it is like a different world and you do get to experience so much but the point of what i'm saying is coming out here for work is really fun and cool and I get to experience a lot of new things that I haven't ever done before and I'm really looking to kind of take the next step in my career and I've been trying to plan out a lot of different things because I mean I just had never imagined that graduating college a year after graduating college not even a year I would be able to think about starting my own brand and I would have a podcast and be doing what I'm doing like it's actually just so insane to me so you know, there's not really, I would say, like a playbook for what I do. Like there's no influencer class that you take in college. Like there's marketing classes that have helped me a lot, but there isn't a set rule book for me. And sometimes it's good and bad, but sometimes I get a little lost and I feel like I don't really know exactly what I'm doing or what page I'm on. And I have a lot of options, which is good, but it can also be kind of scary. But being out here this week is definitely coming out of my comfort zone. It's just crazy thinking back of the first job I ever had. Let me let me tell you guys about my job history. What has Alex Earl done for work before? It was always very important to my parents that I had a good work ethic. And I started working when I was 12 years old. So right after sixth grade, I started working at an ice cream shop. And I would spend, obviously, I would work in the summers. Um, I would get there in the morning. I would make the custard. It was actually frozen custard. Um, my family had this shop and my cousins and I would all work there. And they basically put us in this little custard shack. And they were like, you guys go in here, figure it out, figure out how to run a business. And me and my cousins are like, are you kidding me? Like, we just want to go to the beach with our friends right now. Like, we don't know how to work a register and it was all cash by the way so it was no credit card no venmo like we were sitting there like counting cash we would come in every morning we would take inventory i would get the big bags of milk and make the ice cream and you know then we freeze it you can to mix the different flavors it was a lot of fun um and i definitely learned a lot from that job i worked there from after sixth grade right up until my freshman, almost sophomore year of high school. It actually was such a good learning experience and kind of prepared me for the next job because I was always dealing with customers. And my sophomore year of high school, there was this clothing, there is still, Hazel Boutique. 
and this was like the cool girl thing to wear in new jersey hazel boutique they have these cool sweatshirts like they had all the crop tops for going out and every girl before going out on the weekends would go shop at hazel boutique and you know i think it was before a family vacation i went in there and they had asked me they're like do you want to like model some of the clothes for us and i was like model some of the clothes i was like okay i stood out in front of the store and i took pictures in the clothes and they were like yeah we'll can we post these on our Instagram? And the Instagram has like a lot of followers. I was like, okay, famous. And then she was like, I'll give you this bag of clothes for free. And I was like, what? I was like, this is insane. So I asked the owner, I was like, do you have anything available for the summer? Like, I would love to work here. This is so exciting. And she was like, yes, like we'd love to have you. And I don't think you guys understand. I was so shy because I was working with all older girls that were just like, so much cooler and like I was just young and I don't know I was very very shy I used to be a very shy kid so I don't think I talked for like the first like month or two of my job but then I really opened up and I worked there from my sophomore year of high school up until my sophomore junior year of college when I would come home for like winter breaks I would work when I would come home for Thanksgiving when I would come home for the summer I would still work at Hazel because they are just the best and guys they have the best sweat sets we're plugging them right now um and the owner is her name's jenna and she is so sweet and amazing and literally just like took me in i felt like i was like her little child but retail was a whole other thing because you learn a lot about talking to people and hazel boutique has three in-store locations and they didn't have online but then during covid obviously no one could go out and shop so during COVID, I would go into the store and we kind of had everything go online. Like they switched to being able to sell online and I would go in every day and we would take pictures in the clothes. I was like the model for the clothes and we would put them up online and I would help curate some of the Instagram posts. And I feel like that's where I really started to have a love for social media and just like the creative side of things because i was always interested in what can we put out there to make all these girls come in and want to buy this stuff so like that was just something that interested me from the start with that and then after my freshman year of college that summer which was also 2020 so no one was really working then but i came home and i knew that i wanted to have a marketing internship either after my sophomore year of college or my junior year of college so I wanted to just get a head start and my dad has a construction company in New Jersey and I was like hey dad I'm gonna try and apply for a marketing internship here like you know a guy like could you get me in could you hook me up and I started doing that for it was like a year so every time it was either like Hazel Boutique my internship ooh I also waitressed but that was like for four days that <laughs> that's another story but I had this marketing internship and I would do the Photoshop, like graphic design, some of the socials, campaigns, sending out emails, stuff like that. So I took a whole online Photoshop course and I learned how to do all of that. I was like, this is really fun. And I was pretty good at it. I liked it. I went into my cubicle every day. I got to dress up professional every day. And I love putting together little work outfits. There was one time that I messed up really bad. And I just feel like we need to touch on this story because it's really funny. I was sending out an email blast for Happy New Year's from the Earl Construction Company. So this is going to all of their people they work with, whatever. It was going to like 2,000 other companies. So I draft out this whole email, I make the graphics for it, and you know, it's really good, but I don't remember what I was using at the time, kind of something like a Canva where they had like a template. So I was plugging things into the template, I copy and paste it into the email blast, and you know, I'm like, send, ready to go, and my boss comes over and she was like, Alex, you sent out that email? And I was like, yeah, I did. And she's like, who's Joe Schmo? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I don't know who Joe Schmo is. Like, why are you asking me? Does he work here? I don't know. The bottom of the email that I sent to 2000 companies says, love Joe Schmo at the bottom because that came from the template that I was using from this email blast website template user thing. And I didn't delete the bottom template that said, love Joe Schmo. So I sent happy new years from the Earl companies to 2000 companies with love Joe Schmo at the bottom. And granted, I doubt like all of 
everyone's clicking these emails and like reading every little fine print all the way down to the bottom but i was so embarrassed and that was such a scary moment for me i was like i don't even know what to say right now and this brings me back to getting out of my comfort zone and trying new things and feeling like i'm gonna disappoint people or i don't know because one of the big things i was doing this week was filming a commercial for a big brand that I've always loved and always wanted to work with and I have to recite lines and act and I went in there and I'm going to show you guys the little vlog clips in a second but it was just so scary and new and it really was a dead silent room of people standing there and me just acting and at one point I was busting through a door I was like what if I fall what if I look stupid am I doing this right and a lot of the time I mean they have to stay quiet because the cameras are rolling and I'm just like they hate me they hate what I'm doing they think I'm stupid they're not liking this like every negative thought is running through my mind so I don't know it's similar in the way of like getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things but it's just on a completely different level now and it's insane that I'm getting to shoot a commercial for a brand that I've loved for so long so I'm gonna play you guys the little vlog of that now good morning rise and shine we are back on set today and we're filming a very excited commercial social commercial little thing for something really exciting with someone really exciting. I wish I could explain it all right now, but you guys will see when it comes out. And we're also gonna film the full behind the scenes with everything going on that I can't show you today. So we'll put that out when it can come out. We're in Hollywood, baby. We're, we're really living out the LA dream over here. So today there's a teleprompter at this set yesterday, which I had more lines yesterday. There was no teleprompter. The other people on the set were like actual actors in LA and they were so good and just like saying their lines and I was like oh my god I'm gonna forget something but it honestly wasn't that bad I did change the wording a little bit from the script when I was speaking um but it is awkward too when you mess up because it's just like dead silent in the room with cameras so then you just have to be like oh and like say it again and I don't know I thought that was really awkward but there's a teleprompter today so hopefully that'll be a little bit easier for me and that's a wrap Another day, we were filming something really fun today and it was so amazing. Like, I can't wait to share with you guys what we just filmed and what we're doing and what's going on. You guys were probably like, can you stop telling us about things that we don't know about? But I promise it's gonna be really good and exciting and it was so fun. And the person that I filmed with, who is such an icon, was so amazing in person and so lovely and I am just excited. I'm excited for you guys to see. I can't even say anything more, but today was a good day. Another day of my little being an actress, reading my five lines. And now we're going home, getting changed, and we're going to Kylie Jenner's event for her new cosmic perfume that launched. I think Carter's coming over, Braxton's coming with me. So let's go get ready. No, no, no. Really? I like this. Really? Yes. 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 Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> Alright, this is the outfit we decided to go with. Um, I tore apart the living room a little bit trying to find an outfit. But we're going with this business in the front, party in the back. And we're off to somewhere. I honestly have no idea where we're going for Kylie's Cosmic event. And we'll see how it goes. So that day was a lot of fun this past week and going to Kylie's event was really cool. It was stunning there and I mean she's also stunning and it's very inspiring just seeing someone you know starting something of their own and she has so many different successful launches and brands. At Kylie's cosmic party it was just so like well thought out and planned and even the little ice cubes had cosmic on it and they had like little flowers in it and I thought that was just so cute and such great attention to detail and I don't know that little stuff like I mean it sounds nerdy but like that little stuff excites me and like hopefully one day I get to do that you know for something on my own everyone's like oh Alex like what are you gonna do and like what are you gonna start and you know a lot of people have a lot of opinions and 
For me, I want to put something out that feels good and right. And I've been trying to really take my time with this because when I tell you guys, it's so crazy. I could have 10 different brands right now if I want to. Like, there's a lot of people that will come to you and say, hey, like, do you want to stamp your face and name on this? It's done. It's ready to go. And that just like does not feel right to me. It doesn't feel authentic. And I have met with so many people and sometimes I'm not really seeing eye to eye on the vision for what I want. So it's really just been a long process of finding exactly what I want to do, finding what you guys are going to love and then finding, you know, the right place to put that into production and make it all work even when you do have the idea say you have a partner say you're ready to get going like these things will sometimes take two years to get to market like if we started now they're like yeah in two years you could have this on shelves which also adds another layer of stress because then I don't know I'm like oh god like what if no one cares about this thing in two years and what if that's just not the right time to put it out um so there's a lot and I'm just trying to take everything in and learn as much as I can and with all that pressure I never want to be pressured to the point where I'm losing the trust with you guys the Earl girls because I wouldn't be anything without you and I do think it's pretty easy for people to just say yes to a lot of things and sell out and that's a big part of my brand which is crazy that like my name is my brand right now but you know when I'm promoting a product I put so much thought behind the creative and what it is and do I actually like this product and are you guys actually gonna like this product because I don't think it's ever worth losing the trust with you guys if I'm all of a sudden selling you something that you're like, Alex, what the hell is this? <laughs> I would never want to put out something that wasn't 100% authentic to me and didn't feel right and wouldn't be right for you guys as well. You guys would actually probably not believe it, but when it comes to stuff with work, I am a bit of a perfectionist and I'm very opinionated and know what I want. I feel like that would come about in things that I really cared about. Like when I used to dance, I don't know if you guys ever know this, I think you guys do because I feel like I've said it a good amount, but I used to dance all the way up until the end of high school and I would literally be in my room perfecting these routines and I always really cared. I always felt like kind of more of like a leader, like if there was a group dance, like I wanted to make sure everyone was on their shit, knew what they were doing. Like I really cared when we were going into competitions uh, about making it perfect and about making it the best it could be. And you know, then there's some people who are like, man, I'm just going out there and flailing my arms and like whatever. But like, I always really, really cared about that. And that was something I had a passion for. So it's like when, when I have a passion for something, I will try to perfect it. The first thing actually I ever really did put out was this hot mess merch. And I had no confidence. I was like, oh my God, no one's going to want to buy this. And, you know, that's the first time I'm able to sit there on the other end and see orders that are coming in and see the numbers and see who's signing up for the pre-sale. And I was so nervous. I was like, this is going to be a flop. Everyone's going to hate this. And even with the merch, that took probably six months more than it needed to, to come out because we had a whole collection ready to go for Christmas. And I was like, not good enough. It's not happening. We scratched the entire thing. We got a new designer. Like I, I'm telling you guys, like when it's something for you guys, I really do care a lot because I want you to get the best quality things and I want you to be able to love it. And, you know, I also want to love it as well. But the merch was so inspiring and it was so cool to see how many of you guys ordered and are loving it and wearing it and I love seeing you guys reviews and saying that you think it's good quality and I don't know it's so crazy my friend sent me who's in Aspen right now my friend Sally you guys know Sally but she texted me a picture of a girl wearing the hot mess sweatshirt in a random store the other day in Colorado and she's like this is so crazy to see and Sally's been one of my friends since early on in high school so you know she's known me for so long and she's like seeing someone wear your name on the back of their sweatshirt is actually mind-blowing with that being said i have been taking a lot of meetings and sometimes over zoom it's hard to kind of get to really know people so now that i'm in la i'm trying to take the time to schedule these people that you know i've been talking to over zoom and maybe some new people too but i'm working on something for myself that I can't share. I had a big day of meetings and here's how it went. Good morning, rise and shine. We had a few 
dirty martinis last night which i never have either and i don't know it was just the vibe and my head's hurting a little bit today the cosmic event was so fun so basically we got to this house which was like this huge house on the hills you see like all of the lights of all the houses down below and we had to take a golf cart from the top all the way down to the bottom where the party was and you walk in there's like a bar on the right there was like a dance floor there was little like tables they had good drinks good music and it was a lot of fun in there there was really good people kylie was really nice and she looked so pretty and then we went out we got dinner after now here we are we have a long day of meetings so the dirty martinis were a bad idea but we have four meetings back to back today and I'm going to the office of my agents and we're gonna do all the meetings there because basically I'm working on starting something of my own and I'm really excited but we have been doing rounds and rounds of meetings for it feels like six months now <laughs> I'll go into like a big boardroom with all of these older professional people and then it's like me walking in with my laptop and I basically have to like kind of pitch myself to them, they pitch themselves to me, and we just have a discussion about what we want and see if we align on anything. We have to go. We have to go so we're not late. We're ready. Don't look at the mess. Just keep walking by it. Come on. Oh, this is 12. 12? Got it. Oh my God. <laughs> like I said, seven minutes. Four minutes early. Have fun. Hi, how are you? Here. Welcome to my office for the day. So it's basically me in this big boardroom. I've been sitting here at the head of the table and then we have all of the other people over here and it's kind of, it's really fun over here. There's like a big screen, so sometimes they'll do like presentations if they have something to show up here. My dad was just zooming in for one of the meetings, so he, my dad was like on this big screen right here. And then usually when they bring in like lunch, they'll put it over here. So we have some plates and knives and forks. We have some snacks. They have like the best snacks here and drinks. Like I could stay here all day and just take all the stuff out of the fridge. This is me, this is how I've been sitting. We are done. Four meetings down. It's almost 5 p.m. right now, so I have been in this room all day, but it was really good, a really productive day. Um, I have had 45 waters, coffees, LaCroix. Um, we've just been trying to stay energized and active over here. And now I actually am going to grab something to eat and I have another meeting and this meeting is over like a drink or like an appetizer at this restaurant so we're not done with meetings yet i have one more today but we had an amazing day here at the office goodbye everyone thanks for having me it was lovely working with you all it's really crazy because you wouldn't think how much well I, I mean i guess that's the point but how much college prepares you for these real life work scenarios because I'm telling you all those times that I did class presentations and you're standing up and doing this stuff and I'm like oh my gosh like why do we have to do this like why can't we just turn in a project why do we have to present it to the whole class like this is so scary that is like real life I feel what I'm doing right now I'm like I here's my powerpoint here's who I am here's what I'm doing here's my business here's my brand and it's so crazy because I think back all the time and I'm like thank god we had class presentations where we had to do this otherwise I would be so scared and probably shitting my pants in these meetings i think that for me at least i know some people when they get started on social media drop out of college because they're able to provide for themselves so they're like i don't really need this anymore but it was always really really important for me to finish out and get my marketing degree the marketing classes that i did take in the business program at miami was so amazing and actually helped me so much and you know my one is social media class that i took you know it's a breakdown of like all the analytics and how it goes and of course there's no really course on like how to be an influencer that's not really like a thing yet because i feel like that's very very new but my marketing degree has helped me so much and i really feel like it gives me an advantage when i'm going into these meetings and hopefully where i can take my career at some point because i just think a lot of people don't really know or don't really have the experience or the 
education. So I'm really grateful. And I feel like a lot of people always ask me, they're like, so was it really worth it? Like, did you really need your marketing degree? And I was like, yes, like I truly think that it has helped me so much. And I don't think I would be here because I would be making much different decisions if had I not had that background in education, which is, you know, another reason why the Alex Earl scholarship is a very big thing for me because I think it's important for these students to get their education and be able to go follow their dreams. And another big thing when taking these meetings and talking with, you know, the head of these companies and the CEOs and all of this is I'm a 23 year old girl. So I think it's very easy for people to think that they can, you know, pull a fast one on me because it's like, oh, well, she doesn't know what she's talking about. We we can just take advantage of her. And that's why I think it is really important to have that background in education because people will try to fuck you over. And that is just such a known thing, especially if you like in this industry, it is very easy to get yourself down the wrong path path and you know sign things you shouldn't and do things you shouldn't um and believe people you probably shouldn't so I do think it's really important especially just because you have to be able to be confident and stick up for yourself even though I am a young woman and I'm talking to 55 year old men it's like I have to be able to stick up for myself and pitch myself and know what I believe in and know my worth you guys are never going to believe what happened after we turned off the cameras and stopped recording this day I'm like the one time that we're not recording everything I'm doing this happens so after these meetings right Braxton and I are walking down the road and I actually was going to meet up with someone else but we're walking on the side. It was like right by Rodeo Drive, which is obviously, you know, one of the biggest streets here that's like very popular. And what starts honking at me to the left besides one of those huge fan tour selfie buses? It was like TMZ selfie tour bus, right? I'm walking and they're like, Alex Earl. And I'm like waving. I'm like, hi, how are you? I have pictures. I'm going to insert now for you guys when I got tagged in them because I was like, this is just not real. I'm so awkward because I'm like, hi, whatever. And then they're like, come on, get on the bus. Like, say hi to everybody. Like, you want to get on here? And this girl pulls over the bus onto the side of the road and is like a huge camera sticking out the side. And she's telling me, get on, get on the bus, get on. I didn't know how to say no. I was trying to be nice. Immediately as I'm stepping onto this bus, I was like, damn it, damn it. What am I doing right now? I was like, my publicist is going to be like, what the hell, Alex? And I get on there and I'm, hi, how are you guys? With my laptop in my hand, I had a blazer on. And she's asking me what I was doing. And she's like, who's the best person that won an Academy Award this week? I I was like, I'm stone. I I didn't know what to say. It was like, thank you so much. I like quickly turned away. I was like, no more questions, please. Because, oh God, who knows what's going to come out of my mouth. And I just immediately turned to Braxton. I was like, why did I walk on that bus? It was a very funny story. And it's funny that it happened. But I was like, I don't know where that video is going or where that's going to surface or what they're going to spin that into. But yeah, that's how I ended up on the TMZ selfie tour bus in LA. And the week is not over yet because we are shooting the cover of a magazine. I have done this once before, so this will be my second magazine cover, which is crazy. This day was another long day, but a fun day, really good day. We were in Malibu, so a different part of LA, and it is so stunning over there. We got to be at a house on the beach in Malibu. I was like, wow, like, ah, this is crazy. So I'm gonna play you that vlog now so you can see how that shoot day went a little bit. You know guys, we were an actress, we were a businesswoman, and today we're being a model. I'm shooting the cover of a magazine today, and we're going to Malibu, which we have not been on this trip. That's more of like the beachy, beautiful part. So I'm packing a bag because we're gonna go to the Nobu there for dinner. I've been there once before, but it was raining when I was there, and one thing about the people in LA is for some reason they're really scared of the rain. Like, I was the only single one person in that restaurant because it was raining. So I'm excited to go and see it a little bit more lively, but the windows are all glass and you're just staring at the ocean while you're having the most amazing sushi ever. So I can't wait for that later. I'm really excited for today because the vision that they sent me, like the mood board for the shoot is so cool and different. And I feel like it's kind of like grungy. Maybe I shouldn't say too much. 
but I don't know. I'm really excited to see how the glam comes together. I, I want to do something that doesn't feel like what I would do all the time normally. I want to I wanna shock people and surprise people. And yeah, I'm excited. We are off to another adventure today. We're off to Malibu. Here we go. We're here. Somehow that was like a really long drive, but that was the prettiest drive ever on the ocean. Oh my God, this is stunning. Wow. Malibu mama. Oh my God, <laughs> this is so fun. I love so it. Fun. We're getting ready, hair and makeup right now. First look is like a bronzy look. And then we're gonna grunge it up as we go more throughout the day. We're about ready to get going. I saw some denim booty shorts in there, which I'm excited to maybe try on and shoot in. We are gonna play around with a lot of different looks, so I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We just finished a long day, but a good day. We did about nine looks today. We really put a lot in. We thought we were gonna do like four, six looks, but we did nine. We were just having a lot of fun. Everyone was such good energy, and I can't wait to show you guys these photos and to share with you what magazine this is for because it's gonna be a really, really good one, and I think you guys are gonna love it. And I definitely stepped out of my comfort zone today and you guys when you see these photos you will understand what i'm saying i feel like a lot of the times when i do these photo shoots they have very like buttoned up outfits or it's like very like i don't know how the fashion where it's just like cool girl whatever today we were getting naked we were doing a little skate. it was something different that i've never done before and i don't know it felt fun it felt natural we were just experimenting with different things and having fun and i can't say that much because i don't want to ruin it for you guys but it's gonna be so good that was an amazing day and we i want to preface this with all of these vlogs that in them i'm saying i can't show you guys yet or i can't tell you we have the full vlog with what's actually going on which when these campaigns launch we're gonna be able to like play back and show you guys so we can go into more depth then but that was just such a fun day and we were going to a lot of different locations so you know we had a car i was getting in the car and i'm just bustling back into the third row of the car and they were like alex like you're gonna sit in the third row of the car like are you sure are you okay i was like um yes i was in college six months ago was that longer than six months ago <laughs> holding on to college <laughs> dearly <laughs> it was like almost a year ago but i was in college a year ago going to frat parties, squishing with all my friends in an Uber, like a clown car. I mean, we still kind of do that when we go out to the bars, but it's so crazy because I feel like people, I don't, I, I, that was just such a crazy thing. I was like, I am so good. Like you guys got me a car. Like I can sit in the third row, like no problem with me. And I just think people sometimes, which is another point that I wanted to talk about today with the whole influencer world is some people become so out of touch and I just don't think they realize how good they have it. Like this job that I have right now is the most insane thing in the world. Like I am so blessed and so grateful and I truly recognize how crazy this is and how lucky I am. And it just actually blows my mind when I see these people who do social media for a living come online and complain and they're like you don't understand I had a really long day I worked really hard like I'm not saying that we don't work or there's not a lot of hours or whatever and it looks different for everyone but to sit there and complain about it it's just like it really it really frustrates me and I hope you guys don't ever think that I'm on that side of things because I am completely agreeing with you guys. When I see those videos, I'm almost like, oh my God. Growing up, I had always looked up to my dad because him and his brothers have his own company and that was just so cool to me. And I was like, I always want to be able to start something of my own, but I don't really know what I would do. And like, I don't know what that is. So like to be able to have a brand of my own right now and be able to have the option to take it different places is so cool and exciting to me. And I just want you guys to know how grateful I am. And I realized that like, this is the most insane thing ever. Even though, you know, I've got to such an exciting place, like I want to keep going and I want to keep pushing myself and I want to keep putting myself 
out there and making myself uncomfortable and trying new things because you only live once you're only young once you have to you know get out there and keep pushing yourself and i think the more that you make yourself uncomfortable the more that you learn and the more that you grow and now on the topic of you guys and me being grateful for you we're gonna do a little what would alex do where i am going to answer the questions that you guys write into me and i'm gonna tell you guys what i would do may not always be the best advice but at least it's what alex would do hi alex i got stood up by my date to my sorority invite last night and he completely ghosted me after it was so embarrassing and hurtful because i had a big crush on him but the worst part is he's mutual friend so i'll have to see him going forward Ugh. What would you do in this situation? Okay, tough hate, but there's a solution here. Don't give up, don't fret. Alex would personally say, okay, self-realization, we don't wanna be with someone who does not wanna be with us. The fact he stood you up, it's just like disgusting, but we are never going to give this guy the time of day again, okay? He will probably turn around in a month or two months and be like, hey, hit you up, late night text, 11 p.m., what are you doing? Want to watch a movie? Nope, we're not answering. We're not answering. You're going to remember this and you're not going to answer. And you know what? He made it easy for you. You found out he's not a good guy right from the get-go. And now we get to move on and on to something new. That's like I. That's how I would look at it. You know, it doesn't have to be a big sad thing that sucks you're going to see him, but it's like just be friends, move on, get past it. And you know that you saved yourself from future trouble and future hatred. Hey girl, what would you do if you found another girl's nudes on your boyfriend's phone? This has happened. I need your advice on how to address this situation. Thank you, love you. Ugh, girl. Okay, so this actually happened to me before and I have actually said this in the cheating Chad episode. He cheated, but I loved him. My boyfriend was sexting his ex and all of her nudes were on his phone and I found them and I was like, oh no, who? but basically um, you need to address it and I think you need to leave him. So sorry, question mark. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. He's clearly, if these are nudes that like some girl sent to him and they're on his phone, I don't, I don't know how else like they would have ended up in his camera roll or whatever, but you know, it's not. It's not giving boyfriend material. I, I don't think we should. I don't think we stay with him. Alex would personally leave. She would probably, you know, she would show the proof. She would say hello, question mark. And then she would dip. She would say, no, goodbye. Alex is not putting up with that. Before you became an influencer, was there ever a time where you didn't know what you were going to do? I just graduated with a bachelor's in communication, moved back home, and I'm working the same college job I had when I was in college. Not sure what I want to do, and I feel stuck in like a loser. What would you do? First of all, yes, I completely, honestly did not know exactly what I wanted to do after college. I knew I wanted to do something with marketing, but I mean, that's such a broad term in such a big field. So there was def and there was a point where I didn't even know I wanted to do marketing. I went in just so I was like business question mark question mark like it is so normal to not know. It's also so normal to major in something and graduate and then get a job in a completely different field and never do anything that you learned in college cuz I mean even with like what my friends are going through right now like some still haven't found jobs, some have jobs, some are changing their jobs, some you know do stick to you know what they thought they were going to do but it's just like it is such a whirlwind and i just think you do not need to be stressed out about that at all there is no you know set you have to know exactly what you're going to do it's never going to be a linear path and just you know you pick one thing and stick to it for the rest of your life so do not stress that at all even one of my best friends just moved literally across the country because she wasn't finding a job that seemed fitting for her and you know she moved there she's figuring out her life over there right now she got a job at a store and she's just taking her time with it and i think that is so normal and i don't think you need to stress at all what would alex do i would probably just keep looking for different opportunities and meeting different people i always say connections networking is going to get you so far in life just talk to everyone everywhere you go or maybe there's a certain field that you do hope to be in and like find some connections. Maybe your parents have some friends somewhere or you know, you go into a store somewhere and talk to people, but 
basically i just think talking to people and making connections is so helpful when it comes to the work world that's what Alex would do. But thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, and like this podcast wherever you're listening, watching, whatever you're doing. Earl Girls, I love you. I hope you have a fantastic week. And next time you see me, I will be back in Miami. Finally, we're going back to Miami. So thanks for spending this time with me. I will see you next week. Bye. Ooh.